Hey Pixels, welcome back to part two in the Design and Code, a social media app homepage series. In this week's video, we're going to turn our design in XD into a website using HTML and CSS. Before we jump into the tutorial, I wanted to give a huge shout out to Bugherd for partnering with me on today's video. Bugherd is a visual feedback, annotation, and bug reporting tool for teams working on websites and web projects, like sticky notes for your websites, that effortlessly makes website feedback clear and instant. Bugherd works in three simple steps. Point and click to capture and annotate bugs visually on your websites. All the info and metadata needed is added automatically. Streamline team workflows with an all-in-one solution. You can sign up for a 14-day free trial using the link in the description below to try out the product yourself. No payment up front and no credit card required. We know you'll love it. Before we jump into coding the website, there's a really handy feature in XD that makes the developer handoff seamless. In XD, we can switch to share mode, change view to development, and make sure export for web is selected. XD will automatically create a link which goes to a web page that generates all the design specs needed for developers to code the website. We can use the colors, typography, and images that we can download into a folder and use as we code our website. We can also see the padding for each section, grid container, and so much more. Overall, this is a really handy feature. Now that we have all the design specs, we can code the social media app homepage. To code the website header, we'll first write the HTML for our site. Think of HTML as the skeleton or structure of our website. Then we'll write all the CSS to bring our site to life with colors, typography, you get the idea. First, we're going to code the header of our website. The header will have a div with the class name section container that wraps all its content, including the logo and the global navigation for our website. Now, we're going to establish the hero section of our website. First, we'll use the main tag, which will contain all the main sections of the website except the footer. Then, we'll create a section with the class name hero. We'll use the section container div to act as a wrapper for the content within the hero section. Finally, we'll add two divs with the class name content. The first div will contain the heading, paragraph text, and app badges. The second div will contain the image of the app we designed in part one in this video series. Remember to add alt text to the images. Thank you. 
Moving on to the next section in the website, we'll create a section with the class name how it works, and then we'll add the section container div. Within this div, we'll add an H2 with the following text. Next, we'll create a div with the class name Content Container, and then within this div, we'll have three divs with the class name Container. In the first container, we'll add the first icon image, heading, and paragraph text, according to our website design. We'll repeat this for the other two containers. Moving on, we'll create a section with the class name Features. Then we'll create a div with the class name Features Container. Within this div, we'll create a box and then a box content div, which will then contain a heading and paragraph text. We'll then create another div with the class name box image and a second class named one, which will contain an image. We'll repeat this two more times, updating the box content and box image accordingly.
Now we'll create a section with the class name CTA and we'll use the section container div to contain the heading and paragraph text. Last but not least, we'll code the website's footer. We'll grab the footer tag and add the same unordered list from the global navigation to the footer. Below the UL, we'll add some copyright text. That's all the HTML for our social media app homepage. Now let's move on over to the CSS and make your website come to life. In our CSS file, we're going to use CSS variables to match the names we gave our colors in our XD design file. That way we can use names that we can actually remember instead of the default hex values. We'll also create a variable for the full width of the grid that we use to design the website in XD. Note that we'll first style the website for mobile devices, tablets, and then desktop. We also need to style the body of the website, which includes the font family being used, font size, line height, background, and font color. We'll be using three heading sizes throughout the website, so let's style the H1, H2, and H3. We'll set the font size, font weight, and adjust margins as needed. Finally, we'll style the section container for mobile.
Now, we'll style the header, which includes the section container, logo, and navigation. For the section container, we'll flex the content and set flex direction to column. For the navigation, we'll style it so that it floats at the bottom of the page on mobile devices. To style the hero section, we'll flex the content within the section container and set the direction to column. We'll resize the App Store badges and we'll make the hero image responsive by setting width to 100 and height to auto. To style the How It Works section, we'll first add our wavy background to the section. We'll then style the heading, content container, and image icons. Thank you. 
The features section has a unique layout as it's a 50-50 split between two containers of content per row. To create this layout, we'll set the padding for both boxes to 2 rem. We'll then set the box image size. The box that contains text will have a max width of 496 pixels. Now, we'll color the box image background using light blue, yellow, and pink. Now, we'll style the CTA section. We'll add the background wavy pattern. We'll also style the input field and submit button. Now, we'll style the footer of the website. We'll flex the content in the footer, set flex direction to column since this is for mobile. We'll also style the footer links. Now, we'll use the first at media rule to style the website. First, we'll style the section container, changing the flex direction to row. Then, we'll set content width to 50%. 
We'll add some styles to the how it works section and then we'll style the input field and submit button. For desktop screens, we'll add some more styles to the various sections, like changing the alignment of text and adjusting the width of containers. We want the site to match the design we created in part one in the series. We'll also add styles to the header and header nav, notably changing the nav from a fixed bottom nav to the nav at the top right hand side of the header. Take a look at the live preview to see how our CSS is styling all the various elements on the site.
So that's how you code this social media app homepage using HTML and CSS. This website looks great. If you followed along with me throughout the entire tutorial series, tag me at ExcelPixel on social media. I love to see your designs. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you learned something new. Subscribe to ExcelPixel for more creative videos on design, code, and tech. I'll see you in the next video.